Are you a fan of Harry Potter? Are you a fan of Halloween? Well, let's make a Dementor-inspired Halloween decoration. Get ready to cast that Patronus charm right now on Made by AP. Well, it's Halloween and I wanted something to decorate my yard with. And we've done the ghosts and the goblins and stuff like that. And, but I want something different this year. I want something bigger. And so I was thinking, what could I do that's big and creepy? And I, for some reason, just thought, why not do a Dementor from Harry Potter? I mean, the Dementors are great characters within the novels and the books. I mean, they just suck the joy and life out of everything that they're near. And, well, figured it was perfect. <laughs> for what's going on in the world. So why not have Dementors around the house, right? Um, actually, that's interesting. Then I could decorate the outside of my house to look like Azkaban. I'm pretty sure my neighbors wouldn't mind if I painted my house black. Anyway, so this idea is actually inspired by the Dementors. I've seen several different variations of the Dementors. There's the ones in the movies that are very kind of alien-like, very streamlined with the flowing kind of veil over them. Um, Sideshow did a really great rendition of a, um, of a Dementor that had a bit more of a human um, look to it, which I thought was really cool. So this one's kind of like that. Um, this is not a replica of a Dementor. This is a Halloween decoration inspired by the Dementors. So check it out. Oh, and before we check it out, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss when I do other cool things like this, right? Yeah, so hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing to do that. Just that one second to hit the button. Okay, now hit the button. Are you done? Good. All right, let's go watch the build. So the first thing that we're going to do on the Dementor is the hands. He has some really creepy clawed hands. So to do that, I picked up some armature wire uh, from the craft store. This is just thin gauge wire that you use in clay sculpting uh, to give your clay models form. This stuff is great for this project so I can be able to mold the fingers in a direction that I want them to. So we have armature wire. Um, I'm using duct tape. So we're going to cover the armature in, in tape and foam. Uh, I'm using duct tape only because that's what I had on hand and I have a ton of this. So I'm just going to use it. You could also use um, masking tape, painter's tape. Uh, I wouldn't use scotch tape or anything like that. Something, something that has some heft to it, but also has a good stick to it. We're also going to use some foam uh, to create some of the, uh, the meat on the bone, the knuckles. Uh, this foam I got from the case of my MacBook Pro, uh, the box that the Pro came in, which was super cool. So I just ripped it out and I'm cutting it up to use for projects. Uh, this stuff is always good to have on hand if you have the places to, to store it. Um, this stuff, I, I get foam all the time in my packages. I don't know why, <laughs> but, but I have a ton of this stuff. So it's really easy to just, for, for various projects to, uh, to have laying around. So that's all I'm going to need for this portion of the hands. After I have the tape and the foam on, we're going to wrap it in some uh, cheesecloth to give it a little texture and then we'll coat the whole thing in latex. But let's start putting together the shape of the hands. And uh, to do that, I'm just going to cut some lengths of this armature. I think I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to do, so on the hand you have different shaped, you know, this guy's pretty small, this one's pretty small, these guys are pretty long. The Dementors have very long, long fingers. So I'm going to do, um, well, you know what? I'm just going to do 12 inches for all of them. And 
And so you need five of these. And what I am going to do is I'm going to cut one at 12 inches and then I'm going to cut the next one at 24 inches. And what that will do is they'll allow me to kind of wrap these all together. Armature wire is really great for these kinds of projects uh, because it's very, very flexible. And you can get these in all different cage, uh, gauges as well. I have some uh, thicker stuff uh, if you have to have a little bit more rigidity. Um, if you're building a, a form for like a, an upper body or something like that where you need to hold the weight of material, uh, the thicker stuff is good. This stuff, the thinner, is great for the hands. Uh, okay, so I have four fingers here and I'm going to kind of nest them in together. I'm just going to give it a little twist, twist, and then twist the other one. Okay. This will also eventually give me a nice wrist to work with. And then we have the, uh, I guess this will be the thumb. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert it into the hole here that I made by twisting these all together. And I'm just going to wrap it. Like so. And I believe... Let me give it one more twist. So we'll make this the left hand. So we have the thumb, index, middle, ring, little. And there you go. We have our hand shape. <laughs> okay, project's over. I'm kidding. Now, I don't know about you, but my fingers are all uneven, so you'll want to cut the fingers to an appropriate length. Next, the finger joints. Now, take about a one inch piece of foam and tape it down near where the joints are. Don't forget, your fingers have three joints, except the thumb, that has two. So foam up all of them. So as you can see, it's coming to life. Uh, a little bit. It looks more like a Cylon hand right now than it does anything else but uh, we're getting there it's 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 taking shape um, again this all looks like crap right now but once we get the cheesecloth and the latex on it's gonna look I hope pretty damn frightening so now we're going to add some meat to the bones I'm gonna cut thin strips of this foam and then just tape that tape that onto the top here just to give it some fat. Again, the dementors are not skeletons. They are these drained, drained souls. So there is flesh on them. How creepy is that? That's awesome. <laughs> So we're moving into the kitchen now to do this next piece. I have my hand all foamed up and taped up and it looks creepy as it is. But for this next step, I'm going to need some cheesecloth, some water in a dirty bowl, some acrylic black paint. This is a uh, Mars black from Reeves. and just something to mix the paint up in the water. I'm just going to take a little bit of this, just a little bit, I, I pretty much just making black water. <laughs> I'm going to dip the cheesecloth into this mixture and this is going to kind of stain the cheesecloth black, but then when it dries, it's gonna make it a little stiff. That's the acrylic paint drying. And it'll give me a good base to put the latex over it. 
So look at that. We got this nice. Ooh, gross. Gnarly. Pre-cut thin strips of cheesecloth and soak them in the black water mixture. Wring out the cheesecloth and slowly wrap around each of the fingers. Make sure the cloth is nice and tight. When you're done, set aside for a few hours until they're dry. While the right hand is dry, I uh, put it out in the, the sun today. It's a nice, you know, warm day out, so this dried relatively quickly. Uh, it still has, you know, the flexibility to, to be able to shape the hand in whatever direction I want them fingers to be. This is awesome. It looks great. So um, the next step here is to brush on some latex. I discovered this stuff when I was in elementary school. Uh, I, when I was like in fifth grade, I think, yeah, I think I was in fifth grade, I wanted to make a Yoda puppet. And so my art teacher introduced me to this stuff. And I took a tennis ball and I painted it with this to give it that rubbery textury feel. And I made a tennis ball puppet out of Yoda. Uh, gosh, I wonder if I can find footage of that. Somebody has it somewhere. I know I don't. Anyway, so I'm going to, br this is typically used for um, plaster casting or resin casting. You would paint it on to, a, to a, an item, let it dry, take it off, and you would have a mold where you could then cast something in plaster or resin. Um, I am not using that for this. I am using this to make a skin texture. So I'm just going to paint a couple layers of this on here let it dry and it'll have a nice balmy, <laughs> creepy uh, feel to it. And what's cool is I believe this dries somewhat translucent. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have this nice dark undercoat kind of bleeding through the uh, translucent latex. So it'll give it this very, I hope, very eerie feel to it, very, very dementor feel to it. So. Let's do that. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. It, um, I <laughs> why did I do that? <laughs> um, it smells like, oh. it smells like ammonia. So it smells like cat pee. Um, but it also smells like, you know at Halloween, the liquid latex that you put on your face to make fake scars? That's what that smells like. Huh? Lay down some wax paper. This will make the cleanup process much easier. Paint the latex on and try to let completely dry in between coats. Keep going until you get the texture you're looking for. Remember, this will be semi-transparent when it dries. Okay, so moving on to the head. Hi. Hey. It actually looks really cool on camera. Uh, now I kind of don't want to destroy it. Uh, so I picked up this foam skull from my craft store. And uh, again, the, the dementors are not skeletons, so I'm just using this kind of as a foundation. Uh, but what I do need to do is remove his jaw. So I'm just going to cut it out and then kind of hinge it down so it looks like he's mouth is open. Then I'm going to use some of uh, the cheesecloth dipped in the uh, black paint again and kind of give him a skin and then paint the, the rubber latex on top of that. Again, to give him a skin. Um, this is going to look creepy, creepy as the bad word. <laughs> Cut off the jaw and hot glue back on, making it look like the skull is yelling at you. Hello. I am the skull. <laughs> Paint the white foam black. Next, cover the skull with the black water-soaked cheesecloth, just like we did with the hands. Oh, and don't forget the cheeks. When it's all dry, paint on your latex, and keep repeating until you're satisfied with the look and feel. While the latex is drying on the hands and the face, I wanted to start working on the arms, or the, the armature. Uh, I just have some three-quarter inch PVC pipe that I cut down. 
And then the hand I'm going to attach to here somehow. But uh, I want to paint these black just so they'll blend into the fabric a little bit better. So I had some leftover um, satin, satin black uh, paint and primer. So we're just going to use what I have. Now remember how I said don't forget the cheeks when doing the skull? Well, I did. And when I added them after the fact, I forgot to soak the cheese cluck in the black water. So I just painted the whole thing black and then put a couple more coats of latex over that. So my next challenge that I need to solve for is uh, this, this is going to be the, the shoulders, uh, right? And the arms are going to connect to, to here and whatnot. Uh, they don't make a, at least not that I could find, a four-way connector. So, and even if they did, that wouldn't solve the problem of taking my, uh, I guess, one and a half inch tube and sticking it onto a three quarter inch tube. Uh, so I need to figure out how, how to attach this. I think I have something that will work. Okay, aha, okay. I have wood that fits perfectly well. It's a square peg going into a round hole, but it actually works. So I have, I have wood, I have a T-nut, and I have a bolt that fits into that T-nut. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut a little piece off of here, enough to make me feel good about how he's sitting. That'll actually friction fit nicely. So I'm gonna drill a hole up through here. This bolt will go through that. And uh, into the wood. Yeah, okay. This sounds pretty easy. Almost too easy. I cut my wood blank down to about two inches. I drilled a hole in the center of the T-connector and then drilled a hole in the center of the wood blank. I hammered in the T-nut and then bolted the whole thing together. Okay, so that's on there very tight and I probably could have given myself another half an inch or so on the, uh, the block, but yeah, that actually fits on there perfectly. That's great. And it's, it's not tight, but it's, it, there's a firm grip. <laughs> uh, Will he fall off if he falls over? What I could do is, uh, oh, I could probably put a wood screw in the back here just to hold him in place. But yeah, oh, this is good. So, uh, all right, time to start working on the hands again. Uh, I just need to attach this to the arm. I lucked out and the hands fit nicely into the three quarter inch PVC. I hot glued them to the pipe and for extra strength I wrapped duct tape around the glue. I then decorated the top with black cheesecloth. Well I have his arms and shoulders together now and one thing I've realized is that the weight, so I don't want to glue this all together because I eventually want to take him apart and, and store him or her. What that means though is that I'm missing out on the ability to petrify this in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pose his arms the way I want them, which I think is if I have him relatively erect, straight, I'll have his arm reaching out like that. And this other arm I think is fine right here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drill a hole in here and use a clevis pin to hold that together temporarily. So when it comes time to pack him up after Halloween, I can just undo the cotter pin, take this out, and then pack him up nicely with the rest of the Halloween decorations. I think he's coming out pretty nice though. 
Uh, I shortened up the the shoulders a little bit. He was kind of um, a little like a linebacker before, so I've trimmed that down. Um, I am going to have to figure out how to get a little bit of a slope in the shoulders. I have an idea on that though, but let's do the arms first and then I can move on to all the other stuff. I marked the angle of the arms and then drilled a hole through the connector and the pipe. I then took my clevis pin, pushed it through, and then secured with a cotter pin. These arms aren't going anywhere now. I'm ready to start making the robe and the hood for our Dementor friend. And um, so I ordered about, I think, six yards of this black cotton blend. Um, it was it was cheap at the fabric store. So, but I think this will be a good base and, and but I do want to add some uh, kind of age and fright factor to the robe. So I will uh, probably incorporate some of the cheesecloth again over it. Um, I might have to get some more too because looking at the pictures of the Dementors, it's very um, layered robes, very flowy robes, um, tattered robes as well. Um, I don't have a pattern for the robe, but I did Google um, hooded robe patterns and, and uh, I got a general idea of the shape that I need to go for. Um, so I'm really just gonna eyeball this. As I was starting to cut out the the arms for the Dementor uh, and moving on to the hood, I realized that the hood is actually kind of like this one weird drapey piece over the top. Um, so it's almost like it's literally like putting a sheet over your head. <laughs> But then the front of it drapes kind of in front of you. It's a bad example. <laughs> it's like that scene in Nightmare on Elm Street 6 where the map takes over the back of the van. There we go. So it almost like, almost like this. With, the, uh, with this kind of draping down. So I am going to need some more fabric uh, to do that piece. But what I'm going to do with the fabric that I have is kind of build the under under robe, which um, which will just be basically a sack with a hole in it for the arms and the head. Uh, and then I will pick up some more fabric to make the hood. And then we'll be done with this. <laughs> Moment of truth. Let's turn it in right side in. I think. Nope, that's not how to do it. How do I do this? Oh, oh, oh. oh those are some long ass sleeves. Oh my god. This thing is huge. <gasps> okay, well. It's gigantic. Actually, I wonder if I can fit in it. Whoa. <laughs> Ah, this is great. Ah, oh, I love it. It's freaking huge. There. Ow. These uh, wizard sleeves are awesome. Ah. <laughs> huh. Okay. I mean, not that it's meant for me, but it's good to know that if in a pinch, I needed a costume. I could be a a Dementor. <laughs> okay, let's go put them on the actual Dementor.
now I have my very own Dementor. Some things to point out. So he's, he's perched on a uh, eight foot long, three quarter inch PVC pipe. Uh, he's way too heavy for that. And so when I put him on without any additional support, he just kind of fell over. Um, or at least he, he bent the, the PVC pipe to its, its capacity. So I took some uh, twine and, and tied him up and it's pulling him back a little bit. Uh, when the wind blows, he does move a little bit, which is kind of neat. Um, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. Hopefully, if the weather gets a little bit inclement, uh, it doesn't damage him too much. Um, I'm more concerned about if it rains out, that's a flannel hood that I put on him. And uh, that's obviously going to absorb a lot of the water and then weigh him down. So we'll just kind of play it by ear and see how that works out. Yeah, this is great. Uh, all said and done, I think I spent 50 bucks in materials. Let's see. It was the pipe was maybe six bucks and the the um, the, the elbows and, and stuff were maybe another four bucks. So you ten dollars in pipe, uh, about twenty dollars, twenty five dollars worth of fabric. Um, that includes the cheesecloth. The I think the most expensive single item was the latex, which was about twenty bucks for that little jar. But there's enough to get two out of that. So I'm going to be able to kind of take that sunk cost and apply it to the next Dementor that I make. Uh, the skull was five bucks at the craft store. And that was that was it. The armature wire, I think, was three bucks. And all this stuff, all these craft stores have these great coupons. You know, most of the stuff I got 20 percent off, 30 percent off. Um, you know, you just sign up for their coupons and boom, there you go. You're saving money right there. So you could go out and spend two hundred dollars, one hundred fifty dollars on on one of these things, uh, generic thing at, you know, any of the Halloween stores or your your hardware center. Um, or you could DIY it for 50 or 60 bucks and have the pride of making something yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you made it this far, you are awesome. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Leave me a comment regardless. I'd love to hear what you're up to. I want to hear if you did something similar. Um, share with me your pictures. You can find me on the socials. Uh, I'm on uh, Instagram and Twitter at MBAP77. Uh, because there are several made by APs apparently, even though I'm the original made by AP. We'll see you soon.